All right, this video is all about how to find the line of symmetry for your parabola. And there are three different ways I'm going to show you. Now the goal is not for you to have develop a mastery of all those three ways, but instead for you to find the method that best matches the way you think about these math problems, okay? So as we go through, try each one on, and then use the method that is maybe the fastest or the most understandable, okay? There's no right or wrong way to do these. You just wanna find the one that works for you and gets you the right answer every time. So the line of symmetry is this idea that if you were to place a mirror somewhere on that parabola on this curve, that the mirrored image would create the other half of the parabola. Okay, so that is the line of symmetry. So let's say we've already graphed the parabola, right? And we have the points. But now the question is, what is the line of symmetry? Well, you're going to use your x-intercepts here. So we have negative 2, um, 0, and 5, 0, 5, comma, 0. And so we're going to use the x components of both of those. And what we can do is solve by averages, which I will show the work here. So the laws of average say that you add up your quantities, divide by the number of things you added together, and then that is your average. So when you take a look, Look here, this right here is going to be um, negative 2 plus 5, and we're going to divide that by 2. Okay. Okay, because we had two things we added together. And so negative 5 plus or sorry, negative 2 plus 5 is going to be a positive 3. I think just for um, efficiency's sake, I'm just going to write it out. So we're going to have a 3, and then divided by 2, we're going to get that this is equal to 1.5, or 3 halves is just as accurate. And so because we're looking for a line, a vertical line, that's an x equals line. And so this becomes x equals 1.5, and that will be our line of symmetry. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you that line of symmetry on the graph right now. So the line of symmetry, so we go over one and a half, is going to be here. And I'll extend it up toward the top also. There. So there's our line of symmetry in x equals line. The other way you can do it, and this was pretty straightforward, I gotta say solving by averages is a great way to do it. Um, but maybe you think in a different way. So here's another way. What if you looked at the total distance between these two x-intercepts? So there's two units here and five there. That's a total of seven. So there's a distance of seven units between the two x-intercepts. We know that the line of symmetry is going to be halfway through there. So we need half of that. So that'll get us a 3.5. Now the difference here is that this output is not the axis of symmetry, but rather it's the counting distance you need to go. So this is the distance um, that you count from each intercept from each x intercept toward the other one. So for example, if you're at negative two, you got you have to count three and a half units to the right. So one, two, three and a half, and you land at 1.5. If you are at five, you count three and a half units toward the other point, and you go one, two, three and a half. And right away you land at 1.5. So this is a different way to think about how the x or the line of symmetry is, whoops, there we go, 1.5. It's another way to get to that. So just be careful with this one. It's great if you like this one. Just be careful that the output is not going to be your actual value of your line of symmetry. It's the um, amount you need to count away from that point toward the other one to land at the right location. Okay. So now this last one has to do with the formulas. Now, some people really think in formulas, but I got to caution you, depending on how you think about it, like for me, for formulas, they tend to be pretty mindless exercises where I just gather information, I plug it in and compute it, but I don't really have like a full understanding of its importance or value all the time. I just know I can follow um, a series of steps to get the answer. So 
don't choose this one if you see it as an easy way out, right? You don't want to minimize your chance to understand this stuff, like truly understand it, but maybe you think in formulas, right? So this means that you have your typical trinomial formula. This is the one you would use if you only had this equation, okay? So if you only had that equation or the other two and you could create this standard form from the other two equations, then you could do this work. So if you had no graph visible to you and you only had an algebraic approach, this is what you would do. So the formula here is that the line of symmetry is equal to the opposite of whatever B is over 2 times whatever A is in the formula. So this is your generic formula of a quadratic. We also call this a trinomial. And so if you look over here, this is that equation in, this is the form that you'd want. This is your trinomial, um, your standard form that will help you out here. So the A term is one. The B term is a negative three. Make sure you take the sign with it. And your C term is a negative 10. This formula is just concerned with the B and the A and the A hiding in there is a one. So then you're just substituting in, like I said, that's the tendency of a formula, but it can be a risk, right? So don't shortchange yourself with your learning and don't do the formula if you don't understand it. So negative or the opposite of B. So B was negative three. So notice I have two signs. By having parentheses when I substitute will always help me navigate a double sign when I'm supposed to encounter it. Otherwise, the common mistake here is people will just write negative three because they write negative and then the three and they think that the negative three that was B has taken care of the negative in the formula as well, which it has not. So if you're inserting a negative B, you should have two negative signs. And that's over two times A, A is one. And so take a look at what we have. Negative times a negative is positive, and this is a 2. So again, we get x equals 3 halves, which is 1.5, okay? So, and then the other way, of course, is to just eyeball it. So perhaps there are four ways, I should say. If you've got the graph given to you and they're whole numbers and you can easily count from one point to another, you can count equidistant from both points, for both x-intercepts until you land at the point they have in common, which is the exact middle. And I will say, I'll end the video on this, but not go into too much detail, that um, location of x where the line of symmetry is, that is also the x that builds the vertex. All right, so that'll get you to the next step in the next video.